Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I thought we would revisit something that we actually looked at quite a few years ago and I'll just grab them so that you can see. It is rose quartz stones, so crystal therapy. Now that's not something that I'm trained in but you can actually use the stones to do a very simple facial massage. So if you wanted to look more into it in depth, I would say go and do some research, seek out anyone that's maybe in your local area, you might even want to do a training course, there might also be YouTube tutorials, but anyone can use the rose quartz stones to do a simple facial massage. And the benefits of rose quartz, well, you might already have it in the house, some people actually sleep with it under their pillow. It's believed to be excellent for your emotional health, you know, your heart, the emotions of the heart, your stress levels too. It can also be very good for purifying your feelings, balancing you. It can be good for stress relief, um, just basically giving you energy, simplifying how you feel and just making almost as if you're having a bit of a restart a cleanse and starting afresh. So if you believe in crystal therapy, then rose quartz is a brilliant place to start. So to do a very simple rose quartz facial massage, you can already have had your facial cleansing routine. You might even have given yourself quite a nice luxurious facial. And then you're just going to apply the massage oil of your choice. So I'll do that this moment. Just grab some, just pop it into my hands. And all we'll do is just coat the skin with your oil of choice. And that just means that you've got that slip and slide to use your stones. So into the hands, and then you're just very gently, you're working from the neck up, just lightly effleuraging, warming up the tissues. Again, work down to the base of that neck. Now you can very easily, if you want to, spend a little bit of time doing a nice facial massage routine. Or you might just want to use just a few strokes of effleurage just to coat the skin so that you can begin. Now if you get rose quartz stones, they'll be smooth and they'll likely be quite flat. And you can actually feel how smooth they are. And they're flat, but they've also got the edges. So even though there'll be lots of different routines that you can use, at the end of the day, as long as you're not doing anything that's specifically dangerous or contraindicated to yourself, which again, always make sure you know your own medical conditions and what you should and shouldn't be doing. There's always contraindications to everything. People can also get allergies at any point. That's just a fact of life. So always do a little patch test, do your research. But you really can't go wrong because there's no sharp edges, there's no way that you can cause yourself an injury unless you were using them incorrectly or being dangerous or not actually just doing it without thinking. So it's always good to actually do a little bit of research first for that reason. But what you can do is we can start on the forehead and we can work down. Some people prefer to start at the neck and work their way up. But let's do what was basically the routine that I did many years ago and we'll do it a little bit. I wouldn't say more in depth, we'll just maybe be a little bit slower this time. And let's actually just use the edges of the stones and from the middle of the eyebrows, we're just using the edges and we're just alternating up. There's not a heavy pressure, it's a very gentle stroke. And we're working to the hairline on one side and then alternate strokes. to the hairline on the other side. And this is soothing, it's relaxing, it's calming. And if you believe in crystal therapy, then the process is already getting to work here. So you could do this for as long as you like, but you don't want to overstimulate an area. The next thing we can do, so that was the edges of the stones. This time we can take the stones flat and we can move up and out. And we're just following the forehead to the temples. And then we move up just a tiny bit more, a little bit further up to the temples. Slide from in between the eyebrows, further up again, slide out. 
to the temples, back again, slide up to the hairline, slide out to the temples. Now again, you can repeat that quite often in a lot of routines. I've said this before. Quite often three is the magic number. Repeat three times. But the truth is, it's up to you. Everyone's different. And you be guided by what feels right. And you can already feel the heat. The, the stones are quite cool when you begin using them. I've actually flipped them round now. The body heat and the movement begins to heat them up and now they're very warm. That feels very pleasant for whoever's receiving the massage too. But in future videos, we will revisit the differences between hot stones and cold stones and their benefits. Ironically, when you've got hot stones, they cool down as the heat dissipates into the tissues. And when you've got cold stones, they warm up as there's a heat transfer from the skin to the stones. So now we can take the edges of the stones and just follow the outlines of the eyebrows to the outside of the eye. And then we can take the edge and follow the socket line of the eye. So you're not on the eye, you're following the socket line. Orbicularis oculi. Again, not too heavy a pressure, firm, but you're not pushing on that area, it's very delicate. So now we can do a little bit of work on the cheeks, either side of the nose, gentle but firm pressure, sliding from the cheeks to the temples. Now you see how I'm holding these stones? So I've got them in my thumb, my index and my middle finger. I'm using these edges. My fingers are actually guiding, so the fingers are gently lying on the skin and the fingers are almost guiding the stones as the stones do their work. And the reason that we work to the temples is because we're always working to lymph nodes. At the end of the day, whenever you're doing a massage, it's benefiting the skin and tissues. It's boosting the circulation. But in tandem with that, we're always working to the lymph nodes to boost lymphatic drainage. And as time goes on, lymphatic drainage has always been thought of as essential and very important. But as time goes on now, we're realising it's even more important for your overall wellness and your health. So if you can get into the habit of doing some form of lymphatic drainage movement frequently, it really is so beneficial for you. Right, so we've worked over the cheeks. And now you, you do have a choice here if you like, because you're working on a flatter surface. If you wanted to, you could use the flat sides of the stones and work either side of the chin and follow the line of the jaw. And again, just to under the ears. But if it feels better, you can use the edges of the stones and you're just following the jawline. And again, just covering that chin if you want to work above the lips too, just work there. And you're sliding to underneath the ear. Again, a firm but gentle pressure. You don't want to be tugging at the skin, manipulating it too hard. You're letting the crystals, the stones, do their work. And then to finish, you've got the neck. Now, two schools of thought. 
No one's right or wrong. Some people believe that you work down the neck because obviously you're working towards all these lymph nodes in the neck area, very beneficial to get rid of that lymph. Some people believe you should work up the neck because it's more toning, you're working against gravity, and again, you are working towards lymph nodes. So at the end of the day, the choice really is yours. As long as you're not tugging at the skin and manipulating it that you're actually not doing yourself any favors, then if you'd rather work down, then use the flat side of the stones. Don't work on the windpipe, so leave this gap here, but just work down to the base of the neck near the clavicle covering that neck so each time you slide the stones back up you move a little bit further away and then again a little bit more further away until you reach the jaw and you reach where the ears are and then you know that you've covered those areas but equally if someone wanted to work up then they could work up they might even choose to alternate a little bit more stimulating but as long as once they've worked up they drain they drain to lymph nodes but you would probably find it's much more convenient and it feels easier to slide down the neck slide down and move along just don't work on the center of the neck because it really isn't comfortable to have pressure applied to the windpipe it doesn't feel good if you're working on yourself then arguably you can just skim a stone over it and just put zero pressure, just skim it over. But other than that, you don't need to be absolutely central. So not only have you created a lovely, relaxed skin, not only have you given the skin the benefits of the rose quartz, but you've also helped your product to sink into the skin. You've given your circulation a boost, given the lymph a boost. You've created a nice calming scenario for yourself where you can then go on to either have a nice sleep if you're winding down for the night, or you might just feel calm and relaxed for the day ahead might even have given you a moment just to get yourself ready for a high stress day. And because of these rose quartz crystals or the stones, people call them different things, you've actually done yourself a big favour. You've been kind to yourself. You've been beneficial to your skin. What's more to love? So I hope you found that useful, rose quartz. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know. I'm always open to suggestions and if I can do it, I will. If I can't, I'll try and find someone who can chat with me on the podcast and they can talk us through it. Other than that, have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.